This video is not so much about if or when Osama bin Laden died, because governments lie and hide everything. This video is about the Swiss involvement in his death, presuming the official version and Swiss weapon reused. I can tell you though that Osama was part of the aristocracy, from an extremely wealthy family with close ties to the royal family of Saudi Arabia. And this is why everyone in Afghanistan and elsewhere nicknamed him the Prince or the Emir. And you can see it's all one family. These, these all pharaohs, yeah, here are the Saudis here. Yeah, some other pharaohs here, yeah, the, the, the big pharaoh here. It's all one family of pharaohs. And um, o Osama, he, he didn't really like what he saw. So, this is the true story of Osama. So then Osama, he knew about these things and even worse. You know, here you can see this is the tip of the iceberg, what happened later on, holding hands, two pharaohs here, all of royal descent, and all related to the British royal house, etc. You know, they're all in bed together. And here you can see the arse of uh, President Obama, another pharaoh, and, you know, here are the other pharaohs. And, um, yeah. So Osama didn't like it at all, all the lies while the uh, Afghani people were really suffering and still are. Of course this happened later on, but you know, he knew other things. Yeah? And there's Bush holding a, an Arab sword, uh, together with the Saudi royals of the Saudi king. And they even look alike. This is not the same identical man, but it's the same bloodline. The same pharaohs, only Osama was the better one. He understood and he was appalled. The same lean, long fingers, long, lean hands, not very masculine at all. Same bloodline. And it's in their genetic, you're like doing the same gestures, like... And he had a rare genetic disease called Marfan, and a typical pharaonic bent spine due to the pharaonic incest. Just as most rare genetic diseases are indications for the pharaonic bloodlines, just as widespread amongst the European nobility, also pharaonic descent. You know, I have to remind you of the Tsars who had the uh, uh, hemophilia. You know, the, uh, they got cut and they, um, the, the blood didn't stop. You see, he curved spine, narrow face. Charles de Gaulle, he had the same thing. Another pharaoh. Uh, this here is Abraham Lincoln, another pharaoh. And they're all related to the, uh, to the kings. And um, Rachmaninov. Uh, increased height, lengthened arms, long fingers, it says, long fingers, like, um, like Obama, uh, and um, Osama, it says, long fingers and toes, disproportionately, I mean, look at Obama's hands, you know, it's all pharaohs, uh, the power of the gene, the Marfan syndrome, In every European royal family, they have some sort of a genetic disease. That's why they're so interested in it, you know, to uh, genetic, uh, you know, with science, you know, scientific analysis and, uh, yeah. So Osama was or is either a pharaonic spy and traitor for the elite or he was a black sheep, rogue pharaonic revolutionary fed up and rejected by his own kind as Lady Diana was.
It was the latter of both. Sometimes pharaonic offspring loves mankind and then get brutally murdered by their own race, similar to the story of Jesus also dying for his love for mankind by God the Pharaoh, who sacrifices only his son because of the incest getting offspring was so difficult for them. Yes, our masters have indeed internal wars, only known to few, and hidden to mankind by those smiling presidents watching the murder show live on TV and enjoy the murder liquidation of a pharaonic brother who betrayed the pharaonic idea of their new world order, world domination over mankind. And uh, here you can see him with a lion together, Osama bin Laden with a lion, because the lion is the symbol of the pharaonic dignity. He was called the prince, but he was a prince. And he gave up his life and wealth for the love of man. I mean, who saw him driving around in a Rolls Royce or in Mercedes? He was always walking around in old rags. So this is the true story of Bin Laden. And if he really would have been responsible for 9-11, they would have caught him alive and waterboarded him, but instead they overboarded him to completely erase the pharaoh of Afghanistan, a good pharaoh who wanted to help <coughs> the Afghan people against the plans of the evil pharaohs and created the only state in the world not under their control, which is the same thing now happening under ISIS, Islamic State. And this is why our masters sacrificed more than 3,000 people on 9-11 to stop Osama from spreading not really pharaonic states over the world, using lies and deception for their goals, just as today's with today with fake James Foley beheadings and an ISIS Islamic State witch hunt who are absolutely no threat to the West but only a threat to our masters and in a way ISIS is the legacy of Osama bin Laden who was a saint helping others sacrificing a life in wealth for it and never killed a man in his life a pious Muslim who only prayed when the navy salesmen of death by octagon came to get him. I think it really happened like that because there are too many witnesses like the people in the house of Bin Laden where he got killed. I think the British royal pharaohs and the pharaoh of the White House wanted to ritual murder him like Diana. But King Abdullah from Saudi Arabia had the final word in it to just eradicate the memory of the pharaoh without a grave and feed him to the sharks. It openly says, Ein Volk, ein Reich, ein Führer. So that means one people, one mixed people all over the world, Ein Reich, one empire, one pharaonic new world order, and Ein Führer one American president, you know, and, and a president over the whole world. So they say it, Ein Reich, one empire. And if you try to make your own empire or have a state within, the, within a state, then they'll kill you. So they're already telling us it's right in our faces, the new world order. Ein Reich, ein Volk, ein Führer, this is the new world order. And the Germans thought, oh, he's meaning us. Well, we're so delighted. We are the German chosen people, you know. And actually, it's also, you know, like against the Jews, because they were having uh, a state within a state. They were just doing their own things, you know, and just like the Turks in Berlin do now. There's a lot of them who don't even speak German. And it's like a state within a state. And the Pharaoh won't accept it. He will kill him. So Osama had built a state within the Islamic State, with the Islamic State in Afghanistan. And the pharaohs will never allow this. This is also one of the reasons of killing all the Jews in World War II. 
who live their way in their own community as a state within. And now they live under Pharaoh's rule and command in Israel. Which the ultra-Orthodox understand very well, being the reason they burn Israeli flags in Jerusalem and elsewhere all over the world. Osama also stopped the opium drugs trade, which the CIA, or Cocaine Import Agency, immediately put back in service after the 9-11 false flag operation by Octagon. So here you see the official statistics of the United Nations. Here it says the Taliban rule between this Obama, uh, Osama, sorry, <laughs> they look the same and they sound the same. <laughs> So, uh, 1996 until, uh, so here, the Taliban, in 2000, Taliban bans poppy growing. And then it got all, it got very dangerous for Afghanistan, Osama Bin Laden and the Taliban. And in 2001, you know, there was, it's zero, no more opium. Uh, this is paradise. I mean, th this is what... Our so-called authorities, our so-called DEA and all these liars, all these politicians, they are so-called fighting for. Well, the Taliban did it. And it's also one of the reasons, together with the state in the state, I mean, you don't make a state in the state where the, uh, the CIA and uh, these pharaohs who are parasiting on us and the Swiss banks and Octagon, you don't just decide, you know, not to make any more opium. And it gets very, very dangerous. So and this is what happened. No more opium. Opium. 9-11 happened. You see? And here's 2002. Whoa, the Americans were there. U.S. NATO control. And it went, wow, it went up. You know? So this is what Osama Bin Laden did. So, I mean, this is enough. You know who he is. You know he was. He, he didn't. He didn't want this for human beings, and our children, and all our the Western European big cities. I mean, look at it. These are the proofs. You know, don't believe the newspapers. Don't believe the U.S. Navy SEALs and all these these Rambo's killers. And you know, here it says 2001. It was all down. You know. So then did this for this 9-11 uh, false flag and bye-bye Afghanistan. And um, so they had to kill him. You know? So if, if you want more proofs, I mean, this is Osama bin Laden. This is this, this here, what you see here, this is what he achieved or what he wanted to do. He probably gave a lot of his money to the poor Afghani farmers you know, to feed them so they wouldn't grow any more uh, poppies and uh, heroin. You know? We're all being lied to. It's, it's all one lie. It says, um, and now it says, uh, so this is from the UN, you know, it's not some Muslims or uh, Islamic states, you know, who's writing this down here. It says, now Afghanistan produces 90% of the world's opium. So from zero, Taliban, Taliban control, Osama bin Laden, 0%. It went up, you know, by um, America ruling over Afghanistan to 90%. You know, and all these, you know, it makes people dependent, you know. And it, it's, it's a huge, you know, business, you know. Swiss banks and I mean Switzerland too. Switzerland, I, I show you the film that uh, you know the the safest place in Switzerland is just next to the police station. And I show I showed you the needles just next to the police station. And all the that's where they are. That's where they feel safest. You know, they they the 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 the, the Swiss police they are the biggest drug dealers and the DA and the and the, the CIA. And uh, Switzerland is the center of drugs anyway in Europe. They come from all over. Uh, you can even get it for free, you know. <laughs> uh, no, I'm serious. Uh, they have um, offices where you can get it for free. I, I might go there one day and film it for you, you know. I know exactly where it is. 
So, believe me, Osama bin Laden was a very good man. And not only for the Muslims, but also for the West. No more drugs, you see, it's empty. You know, it's like no more World Trade Center here, you know. Well, that was, that's what it was. This is 2000 and, um, yeah, 2000. 2001. No more, no more World Trade Center, you know. The rest are still there. <laughs> he was a good man. Like Lady Diana. He never killed anybody in his life. And he didn't want Western kids, you know, to die of all these all this poison, all this pharaonic poison where the Swissies get rich of. This was not a bad man. Did you ever see Bin Laden standing like this, you know, protecting the poppy fields, the opium, for to kill our children? No. American soldiers protecting the opium, killing our children? Or Navy SEALs doing that? Yes. Special forces in a poppy field, opium all over, who cares? The standard handgun PDW or sidearm of almost all Western and NATO special forces is a Zig Zauer automatic SLG from Switzerland. And for every German speaking person it's obvious that the Zig gun is being pronounced as Zig meaning victory, as in the Nazi slogan, Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil, which has to be repeated in that special hypnotizing rhythm invented by Swiss octagon of the Nazi Templars as a Nazi lullaby to suck all Germans into the Swiss Nazi agenda. Sieg Heil means hail to victory, just as that victorious Swiss Sieg gun which has therefore been adopted by the US Navy SEALs. And in the military, they preferably use the tough sounding name MK-25 for the Sieg Zauer P-226, or what we, would, what we would simply call the Swiss Nation tool. Now, there it is. Sieg Zauer from Switzerland. Killing Osama bin Laden. So apparently, you also have the Mark 24. And Swiss Billy has stamped a little anchor on it as well. Otherwise, you wouldn't know it was a Navy gun. Because, like guns usually do, it sinks actually. Here, you can see a little anchor. Why isn't that charming, isn't it? Well, that's what making business and making money is all about. This is real sly sales psychology, so the owner or user of the gun can identify himself with his gun. I'm a Navy SEAL because I've got a little anchor on my special forces little pistol. The word Zauer means asset or angry in German, altogether adding up to Sieg Zauer giving away that charming translation of angry victory in English. And angry it is, spitting fire upon defenseless civilians after that ancient Swiss tradition. So you can see all those guys, you know, like bragging about it. They have a Swiss gun that killed uh, the same one that killed Bin Laden and with a little anchor on it, you know, like from the Navy SEALs. Oh, isn't that lovely, eh? Thanks to Swissy, we got the saints killed. And those brave Navy SEAL warriors so heroically shot the unarmed Osama Bin Laden with that Swiss gun for all brave octagon warriors victoriously slotting the old man while he was asleep with his family and children. So on May 2nd, 2011, again a Swiss gun was used to murder five unarmed family members and UBL himself, who never had anything to do with 9-11. On the contrary. 
So, there you can see some more about it here. All those lovely Swiss guns of the Swiss military industrial complex of the Nazi Templars. And some years ago, our masters called it collateral damage. Now, they don't even mention it at all anymore because everyone has become so used to all those murdered Muslims. And here, Swissy even mentions it, you know, with an anchor on the left side of the slide as the official sidearm of the seals. I wouldn't be surprised that Swissy, you know, is already selling it with like UBL stamped in it. Not talking about uh, the children they murdered and the uh, and the women in there and all those people sleeping, you know, to stamp UBL in it. Well, that will be a good sales, eh? When Osama was dead, the seals coded Geronimo, Geronimo, Geronimo into Obama's TV room, where he was enjoying the show thus referring to the skull and bones of the previous owner now lying in the dark and sinister dungeon of Yale where they speak more German than English Swiss German from all these lethal incidents and state assassinations the statistics show that Swiss guns have been primarily used on unarmed civilian tangos it says Zig Zauer Swiss engineered, made in the US of A, you know, under license. But it's, in fact, the Swiss military industrial complex. It's like a conglomerate, you know, they got their multinational and uh, they're all over. They're even taking over the US, you know, well, I mean, uh, there you go, Shooters Magazine. Now, three years later, after UBL allegedly died, all sorts of stories have popped out and hundreds of ex-seals who all gave the fatal shot personally. And some of them say that a German HK416-223 uh, Kerl assault rifle was used, which is most likely government disinfo. First of all, if you clear a house, this is called CQB, or close quarter battle. And what you hate most is going in there with a high velocity weapon, which bullets go through people and walls and ricochet all the time, flying in all directions through the entire building, having a blue on blue, hitting yourself and your mates and the children. So you post the rifle guys outside and enter with your PD dot. PDW or sidearm, which is the Swiss MK25, Mark 25, for SEALs and practically all other NATO teams using a ZIG. This way you don't need 15 kilo or ballistical gear in which you can't move, but you go in with a light 3A body armor. It must have been defined a civilian target with the kids and parents sleeping, so by the book you use no more than a pistol or for move also for movability and no one will grab your rifle barrel sticking around the corner and hang on it and you don't use a laser light or um, on an assault rifle at all that's for pistols a uh, 223 cal high velocity round has about six times the kinetic energy of a 9mm and will punch a neat hole into a thick wild boar skull but if it hits the human skull, it will crack and tear half the front and most of the backside right off because of the spin. So there was a neat 9mm hole on UBL's head of a Swiss Zeke. Well, there's a lot more to tell about CQB, but that would fill a bloody book. And I wanted to keep it short, actually, without going into too many details other than that Swiss gun. UBL got that typical double tap mark of a 9mm handgun, one in the head, one in the chest, which you don't do with a fully automatic assault rifle, really. And because of the high cadence of CQB, 
you want to go in with the stopping power of a 9mm zig double tap forget next one whereas with a 223 the sword drive you do a burst and see the tango still running you will lose valuable time making you vulner making you vulnerable ubs was the ubl was killed with a 9mm swiss gun for sure I fully understand that these Navy SEALs heroes want to stay anonymous with their masks on. I mean, who wants to be known for ambushing defenseless people in bed, killing women and children? So you rather want to write your heroic Hollywood screenplay under a pseudonym, using somebody else's name instead and then get rid of the child-killing bestseller. Sounds more like Navy SEALs than Navy SEALs, if you ask me. Well, of course, these are not Navy SEALs, these are policemen, but it's all the same thing. And I bet you Navy SEALs child killer heroes would also murder unarmed US civilians, if you got the order to do so, with that man in the White House enjoying your show in the TV room. And then you Navy SEALs would write a book about it, anonymously. I know your octagon state killers with your Swiss guns because I recognize that Swiss speciality of killing children and attacking the defenseless while they're asleep preferably. So I'm more like showing the pictures of cops here because when those Navy SEALs and special forces are around you know killing people there are not so many people around taking pictures, you see. See my video, Warrior vs. Soldier. I quote, A warrior defends the innocent and the children. A soldier murders women and children and then gets a medal for it. Just like those Navy salesmen. So here the, uh, is my film on another channel. And um, it's very nice. It put some things in it. I was only following orders. Um, uh, this is from a graceful watchman for Jehovah. Well done mate. Good. Thank you. For justice and the world and mankind. It was a real sitting duck shoot. The assassins came in the night when all were sleeping and murdered Osama's son Khalid, here's another name, only 20 years old and technically a child as the adult life starts at 21. They murdered an un unarmed woman called Bushra, murdered Abrar al Kuwaiti, only 30 years old, and his father too, thus exterminating an entire family, father, mother and son and leaving all those other children traumatized forever, seeing that Navy SEALs bloodbath. So here it says how they, uh, the Navy SEALs, how they stormed the Abbottabad house. Uh, the uh, Bushra, the brother, uh, Bin Laden's 20 year old son Khalid, well, there are probably more sons, there's another name again. Um, so it was a real bloodbath, you know. So the other one, he's, she's limping from a bullet wound in her knee and she's suffering from psychological trauma. Well, nobody's talking about this, eh? It's just talking about, about these Navy SEALs heroes. Bunch of child killers, if you ask me. They're no heroes. Get out of here. So this is in the, uh, the New York Times. I'm putting in the link for you. And precisely today I'm doing this video about, uh, well I've been working on it for a few days, about Osama Bin Laden. And it was not planned, you know. So today it happens to be 9-11, September the 11th, 2014. And 13 years after the false flag crimes. And 13 is Isis, her number and victory over patriarchy, chopping Osiris into 13 bits and pieces. And exactly now, executing the next witch hunt against the patriarch, 
patriarchy, also ISIS, Islamic State. Today is Enkutatach, the highest pharaonic sacrificial festivity. This is synchronicity and the converging of powers and numbers. So this is on Veterans Today, written just after the murder on Osama and his children and the women. I haven't read the whole story, but I mean, it says enough. So even American soldiers uh, don't believe it anymore. I'm sorry what they did to you and your young children, Osama. You gave away a life in wealth for a life under very difficult conditions in caves and in shags and under in poverty. Um, because you wanted to help other people. I'm very sorry. This is definitely not an age for saints. <laughs>